Oh my God. Yes. The baby bell cow. That's alarming. That's too human, but look at her that, donk oh. that they're cutting off. <laughs> Wait, why? They, why they, did, they knew what they were doing. Why there. is the baby bell cow double BBL'd up on a on a Wednesday morning? Why is the BBL cow the BBL cow? James Charles? Wait, the baby bell cow is the BBL cow. Oh my god, I didn't even say that on purpose. Whoa, wow, she is cheeked yeah. up. But they like ma- they did the same thing they did with the green giant there. Like they did it on purpose. She has good her eyelashes. She's Alex Erling. Yeah. That's my Alex. The baby bell cow needs to do a get ready with me. (laughs) Hey guys, I'm on set early this morning. We're showing off our new cheese dippers. The baby, what's her name? Baby, I keep getting confused between the BBL cow. The BBL cow needs to head over to Dubai (laughs) for the tart for the tart trip. What is the H in Jesus H? I don't know. It's always Jesus H Christ. Is that his real last name? H. Yeah. I don't know. What is Jesus H Christ? Oh, it already partially Latinized from the IHC component, JHC or JHS. This is the origin of the interjection, which seems to imagine that H is Jesus's middle initial and And Christ Christ is his surname surname rather than his title. Oh my God. That's actually not making any sense. Jesus's middle name H could be like. Horacio? I think that they're saying that's actually not the case. We've seen a lot of theories for the H. One of the expletives or explanations used for the Jesus God. Jesus, and cheese. The most Christ. likely suggestion is that it comes from a monogram made of the first letters of the Greek name for Jesus. I've been having a hard time just understanding anything recently. Okay. Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua which translates in English Joshua. to Joshua. Okay. But listen Where's to this. Where's the H? You, you know what I read last night? Huh? Cor- Hydrogen. Jesus, Jesus hydrogen, hydrogen Christ. Christ. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Jesus <laughs> Hydrogen. How the hell are you? How the hell are you? <laughs> I'm Brooke Nitrogen. Um, I read last night that charisma is uh, Christ. has Latin base of um, Christ preferred, like Christ prefers this. And it's not religious. It's based in um, l- like language. Latin. So Latin. then any... C H charisma would be like word would be the same, like caricature is also rooted in Christ. caricature is not C H. Yeah, it is C A R caricature. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. I don't. Then what's another C H? No, but it's different. Share like the C H pronounced ka like Christ. Oh. Come back to me. <laughs> That's always fine to come back to someone. Yeah. Oh, let me take my glasses off. Oh, my God. Um, Did you feel... Do you know when we had an earthquake last yeah, night? Yeah, I woke up. Did you? Yeah. Um, I've been in several earthquakes since I moved here. I'm pissed off. They always happen in the middle of the night. I have no idea why. It's this challenge that I have with nature where it's like trying to sneak past me. Mm-hmm. Last night I woke up, and it's so weird that I've been in so many earthquakes, but my brain never goes, earthquake. It goes... There's a team of people under my bed shaking <laughs> right, all the right, legs. Right, right, right. There's a team of small people under my bed going, and then they stop moving. So first thing I do, I get up, I check under my bed, and yeah. I go, you fool, no one is under your bed. And then I go, I must have jerked kind of weird in my sleep, and my bed frame that I built wrong, I ended up with so many extra pieces, mm-hmm. is finally collapsing. Oh. And so I then you find me at 2.04 a.m. going, kind of shaking really quick quick jerks to see mm-hmm. if it would do it and it didn't so i was like okay it's fine i go back to sleep i wake up because it did it again aftershock i love the aftershocks but my i think my reaction is the exact opposite because i think every single bit of movement is an earthquake so my immediate reaction to everything is oh earthquake my immediate reaction to someone walking outside my apartment earthquake oh so last night i was obviously like earthquake but actually shocked to hear that it was actually an earthquake you know? Yeah, no, I, uh, my, another one of my things before I went to bed, because you know when you're like, when you have to weigh out these two options, wow, I'm really comfy, 
and the other option over here is there's a murderer in my house mm-hmm. like making his way towards my mm-hmm. door and it's like you really have to really have to s- sit back with yourself and say is my comfort and sleepiness and comfiness worth being ruined to t- to put a chair against my handle mm-hmm. for me it was no because yeah. i was really warm no it never really is good same with water like i'm gonna die of thirst in my bed alone in my one bedroom and no one's going to find my body. But as long as I'm comfy eternally, I have. Oh, well, (laughs) yeah, no, same. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd think I'd learn, put a glass of water by your bed before you get in it. No, no. 26 years. I haven't learned that lesson yet. That's fine. Cause there's always a risk of knocking it over or like if it falling onto you somehow. And God forbid I had put a glass of water next to my bed during the quake last night. You're just thinking ahead. The ramifications would have been catastrophic. It's just bizarre that my head never goes to earthquake. It was like, oh, my roommates must be heading out. Oh. 2.30 a.m.? Where would they be heading out? To me, everything is an earthquake. Do you remember when we were kind of waiting for that, like, piece of debris to hit yeah. the earth, like, a few months ago, maybe a year ago? Yeah. I had knocked my laptop off of my bed. Are you not dialing? Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead. No worries. I had knocked my laptop. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I had knocked my laptop off of my bed during that time period yeah. and it woke me up and I had, there was no doubt in my mind at that moment that the debris had f- come through my window, flown onto my floor and was taking me out. Like that's just like That's not where, even, I, I understand how going. you made that. Leap. Yeah. That's not shocking. Last time I thought that my laptop fell off my bed, my neighbor had shot himself. Mm-hmm. So Right. That was a leap I was not ready to make, but right. sometimes- that's how it Did worked. you think it was just your laptop when it happened? Yeah, but now with the Idaho murderer, I'm thinking like we talk about him so much and I'm like he should have been arrested just by the way he he looks so creepy. He should be in jail. Mm-hmm. Like and so I was thinking, "Oh, he must have heard our podcast where I say that he looks he looked scary enough to be arrested on site and he is making his way to my door." Yeah, he's for sure a BNC MMP listener. At. He I don't think that that's a stretch that he could have been a listener. You want to hear something weird that happened to me yesterday in Starbucks with a BNC listener? Yeah. Not weird, but interesting. I like that you go to Starbucks. It was the Barnes & Noble Cafe. The combo, the bang bang of like getting a Starbucks and a Barnes & Noble and then shitting your pants at Barnes & Noble it's just exquisite. back to back. Exquisite. That's the human experience. It really is. You cannot get better than that combo. You can't beat that. That's a combo meal. By the way, Nobel Peace Prize to whoever put those two pieces together. And, and whatever the opposite of a Nobel Peace Prize is for the one that put the one in Target, because I don't want to have that experience at a Target. That, I have stuff to do. That is the worst bathroom experience. You can never find the bathroom in Target. Sometimes you need a code. Sometimes you need a key. But they are going to make sure in a Barnes & Noble that that restroom is next to the cafe. Always. They yep. have got our backs because they know exactly what's happening. Yeah. Yes, and also I hate it. Target when you go in the bathroom and you come out and it's almost like there's an audience of people because yeah. everyone's checking out going, you've been in there for a while. But the thing is... In, in I feel the, like they're all going to either clap or... In the Barnes & Noble bathroom, everyone's going through the exact same thing. Yeah. So it's like, okay, your turn. Totally fine. You. I'm ready to hand the baton to you. My lady. <laughs> My liege. Get in there. Anyway, Glad here's, you made what, it. here's what happens yeah. to me in the cafe. I had purchased my pistachio ice latte with almond pistachio milk. Pistachio milk is having a, a moment here. I, I, it was almond milk. I don't know what made it pistachio. I guess just like the syrup or the flavoring. Mm. Um, and I was like, oh, my name's Brooke. That was it. Like cool. no sort of recognition on the barista's part. Done with that. Then Patrick goes up, orders his, as Patrick's our friend, orders his latte, but he's wearing the B&C sweatshirt. <laughs> and she recognizes the character's of the BNC sweatshirt. She recognizes BNC animated, but not but not B lifelike. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. That's like uh I don't know if you remember this. I think I've told it on here before when I was walking I think I must have been visiting you or something and I was walking down the street and I got a notification that I had been mentioned in a tweet and I opened it and said crazy I just saw the Walmart version of at Fibula on Sunset. And it was you. And I go <laughs> I wonder where he is because I'm on Sunset and I haven't seen him yet. I was a Walmart version of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Which means I was just either out of shape or 
But like, you know, you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you know, like I'm looking Walmart version today. Yeah. You know, I'm having a total Walmart, Walmart version day. Yeah. It's like a deep, when you like kind of look like a wax figure deep fake. You, yeah. That, when you're yeah. like, who is that? Yeah. Not, That's not me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally know what you mean. But I guess now that I think about it, like there are people who just listen to the audio and like just see the album cover. So oh. I guess she just listened to the audio version, saw the album cover. And then I think she was able to put the pieces together like, oh, the Brooke that ordered the latte you know is what? B of B and C M A P cartoons. Cool. 2023 is the, the year, year of, of realizing, realizing things. things. That's, I just thought that was like kind of cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. There are so many mediums. Yeah. There's only five senses, but there's so many mediums. We Good have. point. Unless you can see ghosts, which I feel like I'm, Do you, I, I feel like I'm developing that sense. Like I, More and more, I think it's because I'm pretty approachable. I feel like spirits are kind of showing themselves to me in a way that is is breaking the fourth wall. And just to me. To like how I always feel like animals are going to talk to me. Uh-huh. I do feel like ghosts are kind of just like going to end up kind of showing themselves off to me. See, I'll be like, God, if you exist, give me a sign, like knock that book off of my table and then nothing happens. Like she doesn't give me a sign and then like 20 days later, like something will fall and I'll be like, there it is. <laughs> That's exactly what I was asking for. Yeah, God was busy that yeah. day, but he said, yeah. or she yeah. said, I'll, 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 do, I'll get on that yeah. night when I have time. Hi guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, ZocDoc. When someone is just exceptionally good at what they do, it could be a waiter, a chef, or a doctor, you know you're in good hands. It's like seeing a waiter balance five trays of sizzling fajitas on one arm, you're confident in them. For sure. Yeah, when you find the right doctor, you can feel it. You feel heard and at ease. On ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless. The quality care you need is just a few taps away in the ZocDoc app. Yep, ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. I've talked about it before. I have a list of things I need to get checked out. One of them is right under my tongue. is that bump. Um, so I'm going to use the ZocDoc app to help me find the right doctor for my that very, very specific need. <laughs> and you should too, honestly. Uh, when you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Yep, go to ZocDoc.com slash BNC to download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash B-A-N-D-C zocdoc.com slash bnc how was your weekend it, what did i do oh uh we had a we had a birthday party we were both at we were at the murder mystery party which um <clears throat> uh, new 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 year's resolution that i'm adding posts which mm-hmm. is okay because totally. take your time totally normalize adding things to your resolutions up until july and even after july i would say up until december i did i did three of my resolutions in december yeah i think that's fine um, my new New Year's resolution, because it's happened several times, is when I get invited to something, I need to read the invitation. Yes. Because I, I think that's an awesome thing for you to do. I got the I got I knew that it was our friend Tristan's birthday. I go, Yeah, I'll be there for sure. Put it in my calendar, which is something else that I'm working on doing, just adding things mm-hmm. to my, so I don't double commit. Um and I and I go, Yeah, I'll be there for sure. Got a reminder? Yep, I told you I'm going to be there for sure. I'm going to be there. I love, like, being there. And then right as I'm leaving my house, Brooke texts me, make sure you wear a suit. And I go, oh, it's like a cocktail Mm -hmm. attire, nicer kind of thing. And so I put on a suit. It's a suit that I wear to whatever. gorgeous piece. Thank you. Um, It's just a normal suit. Like, you'd wear it to an event. A cocktail party. Yeah. And I get there, and first person I see is Matt King, <laughs> looking like every character in Peaky Blinders combined into one. And I go, what a freak. <laughs> Why are you wearing that weird shit to a cocktail party? Uh, and then I see Brittany Broski done up like a flapper girl. And I go, oh, the pieces started coming together. And then I walk in, and everybody's dressed up. So it was a 60s murder mystery, 20. like Gatsby. Okay, 40 years <laughs> off, give or take. 
it was a Gatsby theme, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I was in a suit from this year. Yeah. So but I, you I, were able to... I started grabbing decorations off of shelves. Yeah. When people weren't looking, I would steal a piece of their costume and put it on. So I kind of had this like hodgepodge. And then I found a cigarette. If I had mm-hmm. a, a cigarette with a suit, mm-hmm. I could be from any time period. Yeah. You ended up pulling it together. I was super excited because I got to repurpose that Don't Worry Darling dress that had cost me oh, yeah. like, t- to be admitted to a psych ward mm-hmm. that one time. But all for repurposing that. Um, it was so fun. If you guys are having a birthday anytime soon, would seriously recommend doing a murder mystery party. And, you know, at first Tristan bought like one of those like online, like a hundred dollar, like murder packs. That was the most amount of likes I've ever heard in one sentence of, sorry. in my life. Okay. Sorry. So, sorry. No, I've just. Now I'm going to be super self-conscious about it. Growth. Tristan bought one of those murder mystery packs that you get online where everybody has a role and a name and like like clue and i can say like like that because i'm saying it's a kid it's like clue. it's a kid it's to a clue. To clue right um but that was too complicated the instructions were too complicated so what he ended up doing was just doing a game of among us where you print out okay this person is a party goer and there's going to be one murderer among us and they're just going to silently kill people as we go throughout the party and it's our job to figure out who is killing people so every time someone is killed we would have to reconvene and think about the last person we saw them speak to yeah it was it was simply a party and then every now and then someone would scream and pass away Mm -hmm. very dramatic way and you then you'd everyone would vote based on their personal accounts Mm -hmm. take i was sober me too so I mean, it was a drinking, but everyone was kind of drinking. I think a lot, right. whatever. I was completely mm-hmm. sober. Didn't take a sip of anything. I. This is why I can't play putt-putt. I was screaming at the top of my lungs. Yeah, as if I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Defending myself. She was the murderer the whole time, and I knew it right away. But Well, of course, I've never not been the murderer in a situation where somebody is the murderer. You know, in a game of mafia, I'm always the killer. Like, I'm just always... And I'm so good at it. I'm just so good at it. But yeah. you did kind of catch on. I mean, I knew right away. Yeah. So but I made anyways. it. I made it about an hour of of killing people before I got. I mean, ousted. All the things I can't play because they're small, harmless games like putt putt. Mm-hmm. I'm snapping a putt putt club over my knee. And get, that's there's a lot of things I can't play anymore. Competitive. Because, yeah, but too competitive to where it's not fun. That's mm-hmm. why I, I can't be around a charcuterie board. I'll eat all the pepperoni. Do you like fishbowl? What's that? It's that game where you have the bowl and you put pieces of paper into it that say things. And like the first round is. Yeah, I do like that. Fish bowl. That's what we played at Nick Vile's house that night that. Oh, I wasn't there. Yeah. But I know what you mean. Yeah. That some people get really competitive during that. Yeah. we. I was screaming that night yeah. too and I also wasn't drinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, the name of the game. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, that absurd. was so fun. If you're having a birthday party soon, would really recommend that. Mm-hmm. I can't say enough good things. It was Especially really fun. being the murderer is super fun as well. Um, and I didn't really do anything else besides <laughs> um I smoked weed on the other day mm-hmm. and went to Benihana's, which like perfect combo. That is uh, that's akin to the bathroom it, it, next to the Starbucks in the Barnes and Noble. It's just like meant to be. It's a winning combo. It's meant like to some be. some things were meant to go hand in hand. Bonnie and Clyde, smoking weed at Benihana's. Mm-hmm. So I did that, and we got there, and like we didn't talk for the first ten minutes. <laughs> right. The guy was like, "All these, like, look at the onion, on, onion volcano," and I was like, "Oh my god, that's like gorgeous." Yeah. There should be onion volcanoes everywhere. Museum of. Onion. I want an onion volcano just constantly on in my yeah. house as a feature, like David Dobrik has that. Fruit punch fountain. Right. I want an onion volcano nonstop, just kind of spewing flames. They should be the new lava lamp. In my living room. Totally. Okay, coin that invention, TM. Coin, um, that is a verbal trademark claim. While we're verbal trademarking, a body pillow that hugs you back. Yes. Continue. Um. So, we're sitting there, we're not talking, and then uh, one of my friends gets up to go to the bathroom, so it's just me and my friend Moon. And we're sitting there and he starts talking. He's like, yeah, like, 
my grandma or my grandpa, uh, they both have co- my grandma and grandpa are in a home and they both have COVID and they can't really leave their room and he has Alzheimer's or she has Alzheimer's. And I was like, hey, man, well, like I read something in Life of Pi, the book that like some animals like being stuck at the zoo. And he was like, dude, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about the next day and I was like, what? <laughs> those are the kinds of things when i'm like and he felt better he mm-hmm. was like yeah you're right like and i think it makes sense now because like in life of pi i can't remember if it was life of pi but that's what i would that's what i told him it was it from. doesn't matter if it makes sense now all that matters is it made sense in, the, in moment. the moment and he was really able yeah. to enjoy yeah um the food and the and the experience and the performance mm-hmm. that was happening at benihana's right right in front mm-hmm. of us which by the way if you're able to go to a benihana's this week it was it's just like a world-class experience and it's something that it brings people together. I sat next to strangers who were ooing and awing their way as if they were at a at a at a gigantic fireworks show. They were just enjoying every second of it. And I said, "Yeah, yeah, thanks for enjoying it for me because I'm nonverbal right now." That's awesome. But um, in Life of Pi, they talked about how not all animals, obviously, like I don't want to see a dolphin at a zoo, but like a snake at a zoo. Snakes don't need a ton of room to run around. Mm-hmm. If a snake has no predators in its habitat, is has food in its habitat, and is able to like safely and freely roam around a certain, stoked. I don't remember that piece of Life of Pi, but I believe you. Maybe it's We Bought a Zoo. Hmm. I've never seen that, but I, I hear either. it's incredible. They did buy a zoo, and not only that, they bought it twice. I'm pretty sure there's two movies. Really? Imagine being able to buy a zoo twice. That's um, I have to see that. That's privilege, Matt Damon. Two zoos. Totally. Eat the rich. Well, let's see it before we make those kinds of statements. That's true. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. I don't think I did anything else. That's fine. This weekend, really, either. Now that you mention it. Oh, I saw you on Sunday. Yeah. Um, that was fun. That Just was kind fun. of like a day outing. Football. Football. Love. The, I love the game. Jew Burrow. Jew. Jew Burrow. <laughs> Jew Burrow. What? Um, Cowboys. Lost. Go- Which, does that make you sad? No, I don't really follow Texas okay. football besides University of Texas. It didn't make me sad. I think the Eagles are, are going to be in the Super Bowl, right? Go Birds. Go Birds. Are you going to be rooting for them? Um, I think it'd be fun. Philly scares me. I Have you ever been? The fans scare me. They're scary fans. Really? Yeah, they're mean. Yeah. Yeah, they're mean fans. I think that, yeah, you would have fun there, I'm sure. But I'd be scared to, I don't know. Have I ever been to an Eagles game? No. You, that should be on, no. that sh- you should put that on your rezo list. Go to an Eagles game. I want to see the Northern okay. Lights. You want to see the Eagles. I don't, you know how I feel about sports games. I try. I I give it my all, really. But. I, I just like, I can't make it ha- happen for me. The fun piece. Right. You know? yeah. I, I try and I try and I try and I try and I try. I try and I try and I try. But you can't. Everybody trying to get me down. They say I'm no. going crazy. You can't make yourself something you're not. Unless you try I really can. hard. But I can't. I can. Yeah. Chameleon. You're a man of many hats. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get into it. Yeah, okay. That was like, an, that, this is going to be like one of the quickest personal anecdote seasons of our lives. Wait, let me look at my notes app because I feel like I did have like a, some more personal anecdotes. Oh, I did figure out, this isn't even, this is interesting to me. I don't think it'll be interesting to you. Okay. But I cracked a case oh. wide open. Hi guys, we're going to take another quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Vincero Collective. If you want to be successful, you have to dress the part and Vincero is here to help. They make exceptionally crafted and stylish watches at affordable prices. Other premium handcrafted watches don't fit the everyday person's budget. But guess what? Vincero Collective does. You can finally own a high quality lasting timepiece without going broke. They don't just stop at men's watches. I'm talking about timeless jewelry for everyday wear, both for him and her. Vincero Collective is a premium lifestyle brand out of San Diego that also makes high quality watches, affordable sunglasses, jewelry, and more. If you're looking for a perfect Valentine's Day gift for yourself or for someone you love, you can now save 20% off and free shipping site-wide with our exclusive code B-A-N-D-C. Support our show and check them out at V-I-N-C-E-R-O Collective. 
Bandcamp.com and use code BANDC. Vincero's goal is to help the everyday person accessorize their outfits with premium products at a price that makes sense. I really enjoy wearing my Vincero pieces because it elevates my style without breaking the bank. I always have trouble finding like a watch that's simple enough and not like flashy, but like looks nice. You know, and same with like jewelry. I'm you always, were saying that. I'm always buying those chains. Mm-hmm. If you've seen me on my stories, you'll see every now and then I try to be a chain guy. Right. And it turns your skin a different color. Sure. And these won't. Even when they promise. Because they're premium. Even when they promise you that it's real and it's not going to turn my skin green. It will. It but does. not Vincero. Not Vincero. Vincero designs everything in-house, sources their own materials, and produces small batches. So they are committed to doing things well or, guess what, not at all. For all the boss men and women out there, their watches are a must. They can elevate your look with a twist of the wrist. Made with surgical-grade stainless steel, durable silicon, and Italian marble straps, these sleek modern watches come with reliable automatic and Japanese quartz movements. Oh. Whoa. Men's jewelry is on the rise. That's what you've been saying. I know. You asked for it and they listened. From pendants and chains to bold bracelet statements, Vincero is consistent with their jewelry drops. The perfect accompaniment to your watch. And ladies, or men buying for your partner, Vincero's women's jewelry is designed to stand out and keep you feeling confident. We make it easy to reinvent your style, one accessory at a time. Thank God. Vincero Collective is your one-stop shop for Valentine's Day. They even offer a five-year guarantee with a 365-day free return policy to make gift giving even easier. This year, give the gift that looks and feels way more expensive than it actually is. Don't wait or it'll be too late. Get 20% off and free shipping site-wide. Wow. With our code. Wow. B and C at VinceroCollective.com. And that is without an accent. I was just trying to be fun. It's Vincero Collective, V-I-N-C-E-R-O, collective.com for a limited time. Support our show and check them out at V-I-N-C-E-R-O, collective.com and use code B-N-C. That's VinceroCollective.com and use code B-N-C to get 20% off and free shipping site-wide. Look good, feel good, and save big this year with Vincero. Do you remember when I had explained like a, a few episodes ago that everybody was commenting rat emoji mm-hmm. on my TikTok? Yeah. That one specific TikTok of like my knitting wrapped of the year. And I was like, what do they mean? And no one could tell me what the rat emoji meant. And I just kind of ended on there telling me I look like a rat. Yeah. That wasn't the case at all because I figured out what it is. Rat or frog? No, it wasn't that. I cracked the code. What it is, it's a twilight thing. So there's this huge, massive Twilight Facebook group that almost all of the Twilight community is a part of. I'm not because I didn't know about it. But if you post something in this Twilight page that gets blocked or banned or removed, you're exiled to like this second tier Twilight group where all of the banned content goes. And that community is called like the rats. And so they were basically asking me like, am I... Am I one of those rats? Because so much of my knitting had to do with Twilight. They were asking me if I'm part of that community. How'd you figure that out? Um, Someone DM'd me. And then I did research into the, that Twilight page. And I was like, oh yeah, these are the rats. Because they use that emoji constantly. And there's millions of them. There's millions of rats. It turns out I'm not one of them because I didn't know those pages existed. But it's awesome that they weren't telling me I look like a rat. Yeah, that is a good feeling. That's basically like, the, the good piece of that story. That's a great feeling. Mm-hmm. Wow. So anyway, that was just FBI work. Congrats on cracking that case. Thank you. Um, I was going to tell you, you remember a couple weeks ago also, sorry that we're circling back to a couple weeks ago already, but um, you asked if I had any predictions for 2023. Mm-hmm. I finally started making some. It's just been like an ongoing list. Oh, good. Um, do you want to hear them? I would love to. Prediction number one. Instagram is going to expand carousel photos. You know, they're 10 right now. You mm-hmm. slide through 10 is max. I think they're going to expand those to like 20 plus like Facebook albums eventually. I hope not. I just could see it happening. That's just a prediction. I agree with you that that could happen, but I hope that Instagram is listening to this and doesn't move forward with that feature. Do you I, want them to? I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I have, I have a lot of stuff and I have to cut a couple. It's uh-huh. like, I guess that's why the cream rises to the top. Because I don't need more than 10 votes. I don't need right. to show off. I feel like when I'm scrolling through someone's carousel and I get to five, I'm like, that's enough. Enough. Yeah. I'd like to see the rest in a, in another post. Post more post than once. Post more than once. Fine. 
you went skiing for a week. You could right. post twice. Right. That's fine. There's no reason you have to post all 20 in one dump. Post 20 different dumps, 20 different solo pictures. That now we're over the span of 20 days. Ground. Again, just a prediction. Okay. It was a good one. Two, the band Fun. Miss them, by the way. You know, I hate Fun, right? The band? Hate. Why? Because I had an incident. Oh, brother. To to the song Some Nights. What is it? Well, great song. That was one. That was uh, one of the songs for my senior chorus concert, and I had auditioned for a solo, and all of the seniors had gotten a singing piece of that song, except for me, who got that speaking part when it where it's like so the this other is night, it. You would have no, no, not that oh. one. So this is it. I sold so my soul for this. this. And I had to share that speaking solo with a f- my friend Jen, my best friend Jen, um, whereas everyone else got their own singing solos. So it started with me, and I said, so this is it, perfectly according to the plan. God, I get this piece of I, There's always dust in my hair. You're always right in this one spot. Go because ahead. my hair's so dead, I think it like absorbs. I don't know. So I said, so this is it, according to plan. And then Jen immediately goes rogue and says, I traded my soul for that, for this. Not at all the words. Okay, this was during the live Jen, what the performance. Fuck? Jen, what the fuck? So I steal the mic from Jen completely. I say, Jen, you're done. Okay, I step out to the front of the stage. This is senior year this of high school. This is senior year of high school, and I continue the solo without Jen. And I- I hope Jen beat your ass. No, I had started la- I got what I deserved, because I had started laughing while saying, and you know at the ends it's like, so come on. Yeah. And I had- the note that came out of my mouth, Connor, c- completely cracked, could have cracked every single window in the institution. My chorus, Miss, Miss Z, looked at me like I had stabbed her repeatedly due to this note. Everybody else in the chorus starts cracking up. At the end of the concert, I had apologized to Miss Z, and she said, it's fine, I'm sure you didn't mean to sabotage the entire concert. With that note? With that note. So I can't listen to that song ever again because it was super embarrassing. Okay, well, then you're going to hate that. Okay. The band Fun will be revived. We'll have a revival. Horrible. And then be canceled. Yeah, I hope that. I hope so. I hope so. It I is. Hope you, so. That was your doing, so now they need to project that on the band Fun. They didn't do anything wrong. They're just taking a break. Number three. Pop. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. No worries. The <laughs> Popcorn ceilings. You're familiar? Yeah, I have one. Are going to also make a comeback. I don't know how. This came to me in a dream. Popcorn ceiling. Okay. Perhaps, 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 perhaps popcorn walls as well. Maybe popcorn floors. I could see those being like retro. Yeah. Yeah. Emma Chamberlain could really revive the popcorn ceiling wall floor combo. Do you think there's anything she couldn't revive? No. no, no. So there you have it. I really tried. <laughs> I know, I know. I really, really I tried. I can't think of one thing. No. No. Okay. Okay, here's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing back stigma. <laughs> here's something that Emma Chamberlain can revive. Stigma. We normalized so much shit in 2022 Time to denormalize. Denormalize? Yep. Ooh, interesting. Like, what do you want denormalized? Hmm, I don't know. I can't think of anything specific. Come back to me on that. Okay. Because I will think of some stuff. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. I just have <laughs> prediction. <laughs> Something weird will happen. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I believe you. A city in the Midwest will have a TikTok comeback. So, like, some city... Not like an like one we haven't like uh, Topeka, Kansas. Uh-huh. We'll just, like some TikToker will go there and show how cool it is, and that like a bunch of people will move there. Or like, can I argue one TikToker will originate from that state? Yeah, because but I want to see a TikToker mm-hmm. that originates in a Topeka, Kansas, yeah, and doesn't move to LA when they get famous. Uh huh. They own Topeka. They say, "I'm staying here. This is where I'm. I live from. I'm. 
I'm putting on my Tarte cosmetics here in Topeka. Yes. I don't need to go to Dubai. I'm staying right here in Topeka. Okay, so you think we're gonna get a Topeka like influencer? I think like a like a Midwest. I, can't, I don't know any other cities besides Los Angeles, New York City, Houston, Austin, mm -hmm. Honolulu, Waikiki, right? That, Albuquerque. It's like, interesting that you say that because when I did my cross country road trip via Rav Four, when I would drive through like Nebraska and like Indiana and stuff like that, I would look into each house and be like, are they like on TikTok? You know, are they scrolling? Are they doing their get ready with get ready with me? Like, what what is going on in each home? For sure. Well, there's towns that were like it's not a Los Angeles. It's it, there's big fish in the small. But towns. like middle of cornfields, I was like, do they? What are what kind of content are they consuming, if any content at all? That's a good question. Yeah. Country boys will survive. Country girls will survive. Totally. Yeah, it's something to think about. I don't know. I just I would think that that would be a really fresh take on this this whole thing that we're doing. Um, and I'd also like to see just like one of these towns. They do it a lot. I feel like they do it a lot on the East Coast. Like these these towns in Massachusetts will just like show day in the life of like there's a lot of culture in like Massachusetts mm -hmm. culture or like, but you don't see it in like right. the middle of the country. Where where are the where are the North Dakotans? I would love a day in my life in doing? North Dakota. Yeah. Right, I've only seen days in my life, LA, New York, and surrounding Yawn. state areas. Yeah, yeah. All those people that are doing the day in the life of New York and LA, they want to go visit. Like, they want to see a life. And here's a day in my life in Michigan. I was just gonna say you should do a day in the life when you go. I feel like it's not realistic because I'm not. I don't live there. It's like I'm just visiting. You're, but, you're doing uh, vacationing. That would be cool. Then give your give your phone and your account to your grandma. And I've heard you a day in the life. I'd be curious. Yeah. Yeah. I would too. That's just a thought. And then, um, oh, Brooke or Connor totals their car. One very much. Don't say that. <laughs> I, I don't remember. In this space. It's, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to happen. Like, come on. That was like the most predictable prediction that I had on that list. I do. My goal this year is to get a new car. So you want to total it out here after the show? No, I don't. But today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I am always scouring the Internet to find promo codes and deals when I'm shopping online. That's 100 percent true. Yeah. But sometimes finding good deals feels like a game of chance. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the Internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. It's crazy that we're even doing an ad for Honey because I feel like everyone I know has it. Right. I've no had brainer. it forever. And so I'm like, this is like such an easy, I mean. Win, 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 win. Win, 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 win. Um, because if you're shopping at one of your favorite sites and you're going to check out, even if you forget, it goes top right of your browser. Hey, hold up. I just found a coupon code. Yeah. You. you don't even have to do anything. It's just um, you add it on. It's an extension on Chrome. Um, when you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop in real time. It's very cool and easy. Um, you know these shoes that I wear every single day? Yeah. I ruined them at your comedy show with the Tuscan blend. Yeah. That's... So I just bought a new pair, the exact same pair of the shoes I wear every single day, comped via Honey. Not fully, yeah, but discounted okay. via Honey. It is insane. Yeah. So thank you, Honey, for these brand new pair of shoes. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate it on Safari on your iPhone or phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting our show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash BNC. That's joinhoney.com slash BNC. Do it. I'm serious. Totaling can be can mean anything. We talked about this last time. Totaling just means that like to get it fixed right. is costs more than the the value of the car. I don't want that because so when I, all those homeless people had that orgy in my friend's right. car, soup he kitchen, de he declared it. To he declared it totaled. Right. I'm saying that I would. I don't want it to get totaled, even though I want a new car because I want to be able to trade my car in and get money to spend on my new car. Yeah. Although I don't know if anyone's gonna give me a dime for the state of my. Rav, at this time. I still haven't gotten my bumper fixed from that last time that I just revved I it into that 
that pole in the Air One parking lot. That's well, why I won't go to Air One anymore. I just clearly was not meant to be there. You know, the, I've, all four corners of my car and the side as well are completely clobbered. It's just like not, I never thought to get it fixed because it's like I'm going to do it again. And that's like not me being like careless. It's me, I, there's something wrong with my depth perception. It's always poles, it's never other cars. So I'm being safe, you know? It's better your car than you it, yeah. scraping up against that giant concrete totally, pole. Totally, totally, totally. That's just, it, that has never moved. Yeah, that's what I've always said. I was gonna ask you something completely off topic. Totally do it. Do you like the new Twitter update where it's like a for you page? No, I hate it. I love it. <clears throat> that's awesome. Because I'm getting so much more content on Twitter than I would normally see because I don't follow a lot of people and I always wish mm. I followed more people, but now I'm seeing so many tweets that I wouldn't have seen before that are cracking me up. I haven't been on any socials lately. I know, I keep DMing you and then three days later you'll DM me the same thing. And it's like, if you had just looked three days ago, we could yeah. have just had a complete I feel, it, I feel it coming back that I'm able to get back on. What is it? Just I don't like, know, I just don't feel funny. I can't finish it. Oh, by the way, I'm taking a break from social media. Yeah. You'll notice I haven't posted on anything. And I feel good about it because Andrew Garfield's also taking a break. And he said, I was I bought a, his GQ yesterday in Barnes & Noble, when I was in Barnes & Noble, mm -hmm. and then read it. Incredible piece, by the way. I'd recommend any of you to read that if you're thinking about creatively taking some space. I feel completely fine. He totally normalized it for me. Mm. Yeah. If Andrew Garfield's taking a break, I can take a break. Totally. Although he kind of deserves it. Normalized taking breaks. Yeah. Totally. He's awesome. Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. He's really special. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's good. I guess our cycles are synced yet again because I, I'm not intentionally taking a break, though. I just can't think of anything to post. Mine's a little bit of here, a little bit of there. Yeah. Yeah. You have value. At the end of the day, you have value when you're not posting still how because you, you as a human you're oh. more than you you're what you post on the internet not much but i get where you're i you get know? what you're saying i'm just as valuable in this state of not posting on the internet than i was when i was posting out the ass you know yeah i don't think i am you are in the same way like you I'm, are okay just so you know okay that's good thank you no problem um Okay, I think that this is a good transitional period for us to kind of move forward. I talked about, uh, I brought up the like Midwest revival TikTok thing because I feel like all I've, I, I think one of the big reasons I literally don't care to be on TikTok and Instagram right now is all I'm seeing is fashion weeks in Europe mm -hmm. and influencer trips to the Middle East. I do want to talk about the Dubai trip. I know you wanted to save that for bonus, kind of. No. We okay, I think we should talk about Dubai trip and just Alex Earl takes in Maine, because I think that's so relevant. Yeah. Okay, do you have chapstick? I, I never have chapstick. Okay, did I leave mine here? I just have moist lips because my lips are about one centimeter. <laughs> <laughs> so they're so close to my lips and my mouth that they're always wet. Mine are cracking off. I want to see what I would look like with a little bit of lip filler. Well, I should bring you that. Oh, didn't we do that we where did you that. did the lip injection yeah. lip gloss? Yeah. Would you ever get lip injections just to see? Yeah, I'll do anything once. Okay, let's go get lip injections because I want, I want some. I also finally want to like see what I look like with eyebrows on. Okay, because let's do, let's go get some procedures, some light procedures that can be reversed. Cool. I'm going to come back and be like, hello, guys. You could at least get a lip flip. What is that? It would be, it's like a small, a bit injection in your top lip that just like when you smile, like instead of your lip, see how when I smile, my lip, my front lip kind of goes under? Like it's like kind of like. It doesn't. It only went no, under but when a you push it but under. But a lip flip, okay, even if it doesn't go under, the lip flip would make it like really not under. I don't want that. No, you do. That's what everyone has. No. No, you I do. I don't want that. Okay, then you want like genuine like filler. I don't know. I don't know what I want. Okay, we could explore different options at the store. Yeah, um, at the lip filler store. At the lip Anyways, filler store. Um, we were talking about Alex Earl. So I like have been. I missed the whole Alex Earl thing. I follow her on everything because I hate being left out. So I followed her on everything to kind of keep up. I guess the content's like not necessarily made for me. So I don't really like. I don't get it, but I think it's. I think it's fun to 
it's like watching a show all together. Mm -hmm. Like when we used to all watch Outer Banks or Euphoria at the right. same time, it feels like we're doing that. But it was funny the other day, you sent me, I sent you this thing and said, oh, this girl's totally Alex Erling as a verb. So I started using Alex Earl as a verb. Right. And then you said that there's a phenomenon happening where people are saying, you're my Alex Earl as a noun. Right. So this girl's already, her name's being used as both a noun and a verb? Yes. I'm verbing? Oh, that girl's Alex Erling. Yeah. And you're my Alex Earl. Interesting. Is a she's 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 trans uh sending? Transcending language. Language. That's awesome. Good for her. I first of all I think she seems so kind and sweet. I think she has a good heart. But also I don't I, watch get ready with me videos anyway. So it's like I don't think I would I'm not glued to her content just because like that's not the kind of content I'm glued to. Yeah. Like I'm not under the spell, but also like do I get it? That's the question. It's I guess. It's cool because like she technically she's not doing anything new, but like she she her personality is so fresh that people like her and they trust her, which is cool. That's like a win. I think and I this is I don't know if this is a controversial take, but I'm kind of scared to say it. I think that the reason that she's so popular and we might have to cut this out. I'm really not sure if it sounds mean or not because I mean this with so much love is that she's so hot that people don't expect someone that hot to have even like a little bit of a personality. That's not mean. Okay. That's a huge compliment. Okay. It is? Uh -huh. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was backhanded. Kind of is. No. I think if you look at someone, hot people don't need to have personality. They don't. We, we always say, you can't have it all. But she, she has enough. Like she has enough yeah. of a personality that it's like, whoa. Like that's awesome that you were able to develop that yeah. sense of sweetness when you didn't need it to survive. You don't need to. You could have kept that in your back you pocket. You could have thriven your whole life. Thriven. Thriven your whole life without that shred of personality. Mm -hmm. And yet you have it. And right. that's sweet. Thanks. Thank you. Here's here's another take on the whole thing. Okay. It's interesting to see influencers and the whole thing about influencers, influencers become influencers because they're relatable and they're influencing people to do certain things. You don't need to be famous. You don't need to be hot. You just have to have enough influence to get people to do or buy or, you know, whatever. Watch. You do stuff. The things that are happening now are so far from relatable. All the TikTok, all the teenage TikTokers going across the pond to go to fashion events. I'm just so confused. These, like fashion shows they're posting these fashion shows like sorority girls right. post birthday dinners it's like every fucking day there's like follow me to uh burlington coat factory in <laughs> afghanistan show i'm like what where why are you there <laughs> yeah i don't know Connor. i want to see you renegade you know come back come back and renegade right we've for completely us. lost come shake that, like shake your ass for the Thanksgiving table table again. I miss those days. One hundred percent. We used to be able to achieve the things that we saw on TikTok. Like we, as a consumer, could watch someone famous renegade, and we ourselves could say, "I'm going to get a learn that dance." But we now don't have the opportunity yeah. to go to the Burlington Coat Factory location in Afghanistan. I just, I'm you know, I'm just confused, and it, it's, it's like, I'm conf I'm confused where you go from like an influencer to now. That's not relatable, right? At all to any of the people that follow it, because I think likely a but lot of people those... still love it. People love things I think... because they're relatable, and then people love things because they're not relatable. I think this is really good because TK was talking about this on her podcast. She said um, there is this phenomenon that used to happen on YouTube where people would follow these big YouTubers as they grew, and they felt like every time this Jake Paul person would buy a car or a house they'd be mm -hmm. stoked because they felt like they watched them grow right. to be able to do stuff like that. And I guess that's happening. And they're like, yes, queen, you made it. Well, now Alex like was super rich to begin with. Yeah. But I'm not seeing the sentiment of like, oh, you're in a private jet. You gross. No, pig. they love it. They're like, yes, queen, go off. And I think, honestly, I think she has an advantage there because I think with other people, they see them start out like themselves and then become so unrelatable yeah. that it's like there's a resentment. Yeah. But with Alex, it's like she was unrelatable to begin with. So anything she does, it's like, okay, well, I never related to you to begin with. I'm not going to get bitter. Yeah. So I think she has an advantage. Yeah, there. that's interesting, too. I think in that same vein, 
especially with these fashion things. I don't know why I'm so hung up on them. I feel like that's just what I'm getting fed a lot of. I haven't seen so many of those. I guess just the Dubai trip. It's a lot of. Oh, okay, so the Dubai trip is more of like an influencer okay. specific trip. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen so many of the fashion. And the fashion things, I think a lot of people will have seen it. Like everyone at, like Chris Olsen's at one right now. Mm. He's good at it. He's so good at it. But like, it's just it's just crazy. I'm I'm being fed so much of those. I get the sense that like a lot of these influencer trips are like the CEO is on the trip. I'm like, I think the CEO just wants to hey. party. There was also like a lot of stuff. Here's the thing. I think Dubai is trying to rebrand itself right now because what's up with the private Beyonce concert happening at the same time as this big Dubai influencer trip where that's what everyone's talking about. I thought it was the same thing, but there's this huge hotel opening there. Yeah. The Atlantis or something. And they paid all of these actual influ- like Kendall Jenner and Beyonce had a private concert and I can't remember who else was there. But Dubai somehow, oh, and uh, Rebel Wilson was there, Uh-oh. which was weird because homosexuality is illegal in Dubai. I think you just can't act on it. Which sucks. I don't know. I guess I don't know. But you also can't dress the way you dress in LA. Right, right. I don't know. It's like really questionable. They paid Beyonce $36 million for her show that night. Well, that's what people are saying. Like the Dubai trip must have been so expensive. Like Tarte really fucked up. Why? Because they spent all of their money on a trip that probably like no one's buying Tarte because of. I think it's br- brand recognition. But I think it yeah, like people are talking. A... And I saw the TikTok that was like the government probably paid for all of that yeah. to get people to come to Dubai. Dubai has so, unlimited money. I don't know. I don't know either. Is that where they went in the second Sex and the City movie? <laughs> I don't know. One place I have no interest in visiting, Dubai. Oh, I would go. I don't know, actually. No interest. I'm pretty sure it's a, like a 24-hour flight. Yeah. I don't, I don't care for buildings and like sand. True. That's a good point. I don't think I do either. But it is and like... I live on the beach. Like, I don't need to... Yeah. I mean, I'd kind of like to go everywhere once. I've only been like three places. You would die the second you touch Antarctica. You would f- freeze. The yeah. Day. I'm not interested in going to Antarctica. Okay. I do want to go on the Drake Passage, not get off the boat. What's Drake Passage? Like, the, what you, the passage you need to cross to get to Antarctica where it's like so insanely bumpy that everyone gets sick. Oh. That's what that's the side of TikTok I'm on. Drake Passage talk. <laughs> Drake Passage talk. Ooh, yeah. Interesting. I thought, everyone's I, going to Antarctica. I thought it had something to do with like Drake the rapper. No. Did you see this is bizarre. This is all over the place. Justin Bieber sold all of his music rights for two hundred million dollars. I did see that, but I have one more thing about Alex. Oh, Girl. sorry. Okay? I no. thought you were gonna say one more thing about the Drake Passage. No, 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 no. I'm done with Drake Passage. Okay, we're moving on from but Drake Passage. The talk. thing about Alex Earl is you know how you were saying or I was saying that people say like, oh, you're my Alex Earl when they're talking about creators that like they're obsessed with. Yeah. I want to show you my Alex. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is the girl where I'm like, okay, she's like, she could influence me to do anything. Okay. This is my Alex Earl. Okay, so who is this? I don't know her name. Her name is Chloe Metro. Chloe. Chloe Metro is my Alex Earl. And she's just someone who, I don't follow her, but she pops up on my For You page and I'm like, Thank God, I needed her today. Yeah, okay. Let's so hit it. Get ready with me for my best friend's bar mitzvah. So I just showered and blew out my hair. I think I'm either going to curl or straighten it. I really can't decide. Nope. I have to know if she's going to curl or straighten it. how much time I have left. I'm giving myself 15 minutes to do my makeup. But I did get a new dress. So, like gorgeous, dr- gorgeous See, dress would, she's she's for that bar mitzvah. Okay, I would say this girl is Alex Erling. My oh, she's my Alex Erling. She, she's your like, Alex Erling. I Earl. love watching her apply that. Like I'm, I, this girl applied is, powder I blush with my hands at that age. This girl is Alex Erling, like, and she is so your talented. I use my mom's concealer today because I looked on Sephora, and yeah. this is the one that has pink undertones. So it okay, undertones. Okay. watch this whole thing. Really? Yeah. You don't want to see if she straightens her curls or well, hair for the bar Well, let's fast forward to the end. It's okay. like three minutes long. Okay. Well, let's fast forward. Let's just go to the final look. Oh, look how amazing she pulled that together. Gorgeous. Yeah. I also I think there's. Like a huge piece of nostalgia here for me that you Probably, don't have. Yeah. Getting ready for a bar about mitzvah. Shoes. Here you know, I wore. Wow, look outfit. at the sneakers. That was that's a big. A, piece. That's a fun choice. People would wear Converse with their dresses all the time too. Bar mitzvahs. I wore flip old navy flip flops to my own bar mitzvah. That's okay. It was a different time. Yeah. No, my nails weren't done at at all. No pedicure. Old navy flip flops. Dress was held back with safety pins. Oh, Chloe. I hope she yeah. had fun. I hope she. Had, I know she had a blast. That's She's good. such a girl's girl. Down totally. to have a good time. 
That's my Alex Earl. She's partying her ass off. She is. Um, Thir- 13 years young. Totally. Yeah. Oh, it makes me so sad that you weren't at my bat mitzvah. I know. You should have another one. Oh. I was thinking for my next birthday I should have a bat mitzvah, but I've changed my mind. You know what I'm going to do? And you're going to love this. What is it? I'm going to make everyone dress up as one of my hyperfixations. Like something that I've been obsessed with. This sounds like something that they would do like at an insane asylum. No. They would encourage them not to do that probably. Oh, yeah. What do you think you would dress up as for my birthday party? Um, Like matzo ball soup. Yeah, you could do better. I don't want to dress as one of your actual ones because it would scare me to... Like to you have think you like, like staring at me all night. You? Yeah. Well, start thinking about what you're going to dress up as. Okay. Well. Matzo ball would be fine, but like I do think you could do better. Do you think you have a platonic relationship with matzo ball soup, or do you? Would you like if the, like the girl with the fence in bonus? No, last week? it's platonic. Okay. But ooh, we were talking about how I have had relationships with animated characters before that were not platonic. Yeah. Like I've been, I've had crush, like real crushes. My first crush ever was the Count. Like, from the Muppets? from Sesame Street. Oh, like, and it was sexual. Oh, he's kind of fun. It, yeah, and I mean, the, it was sexual. I mean, I don't think I knew it was sexual that young of an age, but I had feelings for him that were romantic. Interesting. And then Woody from Toy Story. I've heard that one before. Those were romantic as well. Woody. And then my first human was Clay Aiken. Hmm. Yeah. And then, then the rest were human. But the animated characters were able to transition me to human obsessions. Do you think any cartoons are hot? Not anymore. But you did. Yeah. Who? I think we've talked about this before. Well, let's talk about it again. Nala. Oh, yeah. Lion King. Yeah. Um, The girl crush in uh, Goofy Movie. Oh, yeah. She was cute. Yeah, she was. She's cute. total girl next door. Total girl next door. Yeah. Um. And also, I guess, the green M&M. Oh, I guess we have to talk about that. Yeah, we freaking... Unfortunately, this is a saga that just like keeps on giving. It keeps, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I have to say that this is so obviously now this is a marketing play, the M&M's thing. And they win. And I wish them all the best with Maya Rudolph yeah. as, as, their, as their new team. But 2023 is the year of... Well, let's recap it if people don't know. Of what, losing the plot. Right. If people don't know what happened with the m and Yeah. Basically, so much controversy and backlash has happened with all of the m and having their own unique personalities and kind of causes, if right. you will, that they have decided to strip the m ms of... They, they, they fired the m and Yeah, of their personalities and... No severance. No severance. And instead, the new spokes, bo- sp- spokesperson. Whoa, spokesperson of m M&M, Incorporated will be Maya Rudolph, a real person. You can't go wrong with Maya Rudolph. No, but this is so obviously in preparation for a Super Bowl ad. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Like, they're all coming back, I'm sure. It's just interesting that they all they needed to be laid off right after right after the release of the all female M and M. Right. Bad timing. Horrible timing. But we have some special B and C green M and M's. What in the world to, are these? To celebrate. Oh my God! Happy one year. Izzy got these for us. It's our one year. Thanks, to, Izzy. It's our one year today. Shut up. No. I think. Wow. And look, they have pictures of us on them. Can you guys see this on the green screen? Wait, is this a uh, a cartoon version of a caricature of me, and then you just a normal photo? <laughs> no, I think they're both just normal. Wow. I look like shit. Well, it's like three D printed M and M, so um, I'm not. Wow, I had so anymore. much interesting stuff to say about. Thanks, the- Izzy. These but- are so sweet. But now I really have nothing about the M M&M? and M. Yeah, I mean, you obviously can't go wrong with Maya Rudolph. No, but like they talk about this a lot on Fox News. Did you know that Tucker Carlson keeps going? No. We've taken the high heels off of the green M&M. Does that mean that all of our children are working for China? It's like he's like he needs the, making an, really an, an absurd leaps from the M&M Incorporated. Mm-hmm. These are good. Like are really good. These don't taste like any M&M I've ever had. They taste like milky good. Creamy. 
very milky, very milky, very creamy. I don't really have anything else to say about the M&Ms. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just like, one of those they've things. They've just been I've, doing. They have not done one thing that they've needed to do. Like no move that they've made has ever been necessary. Yeah. You know. Um. One hundred percent. I'm. I'm so curious what like the pipeline of of. Here's the thing. Here's a marketing idea for candy. Hey, no need to give all of these M and M's like human humanized characteristics. Here's a great marketing idea for M and M's. They're great. Nobody has an issue with M and M's. Simply say they hey, taste good. Hey, buy some. And people will. Yeah. Say hey, remember us? You probably want some M and M's right now. And I'd be like, yeah, totally. Don't take that green M&M's high heels. What am I thinking? Get this. Huh. You remember those old candies that were like M&M Hershey Kisses? Yeah. Like they were her colored tiny Hershey Kisses. Can you guys look up Kissables chocolate? Okay, M&M, you want marketing? But Bring the... Wait, these... Maybe that's not what they, yeah, bring these back. This isn't M&M's at all, though. This is a completely different company. But M&M, if you want marketing, make some of these. I hope that the M&M's unionized. They got rid of some of the best foods. These grips. 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 Yeah. Those carrots that came with the Bugs Bunny Ranch. The, the little pack of carrots, and it had this little circular tub of ranch. No. No. Can you look up Bugs Bunny Carrot and Ranch? And I could be just, Bugs Bunny here could be a figment of my imagination. No, I don't think Bugs Bunny was a piece of this at all. Google tried to search and said, Bugs Yes, 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 yes. Cool cuts. I think. Cool cuts. Cool cuts. I don't know. I don't know if that's it. Well, someone on Twitter made a thread of other fuckable uh, brand characters. Do you want to look oh, at Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. I don't think this is in any particular order, but to mourn the loss of the sexy M&Ms, here's a ranking of the most fuckable cartoon brand mascots. Number one, the Jolly Green Giant. He's, like, too hot. That's Logan from Equinox. Yeah, he's usually, like, when people are that hot, I steer clear. But... Okay. It, yeah, he's a beef Yeah, guy. like... Well, cause it's because he's been eating his, his greens. His greens. That's marketing. But if you're a vegetarian, you don't... I mean, for the most case, vegetarians don't look like that, but he's probably eating beef. He's as well. probably, yeah. But that's not, they don't want you to Number know that. Number two, Wendy. Oh, I never Wendy's. thought she was See, she sexualized. She seems like a child to me. Yeah, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass out on that, respect. but interesting 9.5 out of 10 rating from mm -hmm. Twitter user. <laughs> um, watch list. Number no, three. No, I won't be Mr. engaging Clean. in sexual activity with Mr. Clean at Mr. this Clean. time. Eight out of 10. It feels a little in your face. He's also gay, right? Why do you say that? Isn't that just common knowledge? Is that a Reddit thing? I don't know. I've never no, heard of No, I Mr. think Clean that's is... just like how Dumbledore is gay. Mr. Clean is gay. Whoa. I don't know where you get this stuff. Like Wattpad? No, it's just like, you know how you just know things? Like you just know how to breathe without thinking about it like your brain just tells you how to breathe are you saying that's the same way your, i know that mr clean is gay your gator, you just know mr clean's gay your gator is going biological off it. no it's just like a fact of life whales are mammals let's go to mr clean is a gay man <laughs> let's go to number four toucan. Oh no interesting toucan sam 7.5 out of 10 i think toucan sam has a great personality if you've seen him in the commercials, he kind of just is full of life, full of energy. He really doesn't slow down. And that's what you want to see in a in a cartoon character for, for Fruit Loops. Sure, but I think he's missing the fuckability. Piece. I think he's fuckable because he's good at his job and he's enthusiastic at it. Okay, awesome. I'm Which supporting is why you too. I was checking out a car from Enterprise and I was like, everyone here is fuckable because they're so happy to be at their job and they're mm. good at it. And that's what makes someone's fuckable, someone fuckable. To you? Yeah, good and enthusiastic at your job is a great quality to have. I agree, but that never has screamed like fuckable to me. Let's see if it does now. Okay, interesting. Number five, Mr. Pringle. Six out of ten. No, but that kind of looks like Hank. 
My roommate? Yeah. Interesting. With a mustache. It totally does. Yeah. Love him. Mr. Pringle has never... Ooh, uh-oh. Number six. Kool-Aid man. I'm not feeling attracted to any of these people, really, except for the Green Giant. But you said he was too he, much. Yeah, but like, if I had to... You don't have to. Yeah, but I would... It's just typically like... You know those people that are too hot on Hinge or Tinder or whatever, so you just swipe left out of respect? Because it's like you don't even want to have them not match The Jolly back. Green Giant is not going to force you to have sex with him. <laughs> he seems like I a know. good dude. No, I know. And he has a lot at stake. I, I would then, but I'm just saying typically, like if I was being realistic, like we wouldn't be a match. Okay. But it, taking all of the, I guess taking everything away, I would. Kool-Aid man. No, and, he's a kid. To me, oh, I don't get that because he comes in and says, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think that that's a child. I man. think he's going through puberty and his voice, his balls just dropped. Okay. Cocoa Puffs Cuckoo Bird, two no. out of ten. So this is a two out of ten on fuckability. I'm, I agree, like, I see no I know people that have that personality. And I don't even, I feel like I don't know these guys' personalities well enough. And they, they do pull, but the girls always regret it. Ooh, I know exactly who you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah, yes. you're so right. You know you're what so I mean. Right. Okay, you're so right. Great, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, of course, uh, the new M and M's, which get zero out of ten. Yeah, Brown can still text me though. And Green was so fuckable before. Yeah, I mean, she just put on sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but at the end of the day, like, look at poor Orange M and M with it, its anxiety. Oh no, they he's still yeah, anxious. Go. Look at Red M and M. I was so right. He's a he's an angry fella. You're seeing anger from that. Yeah, and I'm seeing well malice, and I'm. Yeah, good word. I'm seeing something sinister. Yeah, I'm seeing um, yellow Eminem is or blue Eminem is himbo. Oh, can we keep yeah. scrolling and see if anyone added any superlatives? Who's that? Oh, oh, they, oh my god! I think they're fucking each other. The Apple Jacks character. The apple, the cinnamon stick, and the apple. Cinnamon is the Winamon. Yeah. I think they're fucking each other. I don't think so. I think they're just boys that smoke a lot of weed. Really? Mm -hmm. There's something sexual there to me for sure. Oh, interesting. Let's look at one more and then we can do something else. Okay. No one else threw any in. They're just commenting on the rest. Okay. Okay. Fine. Oh, I wanted to talk about Justin Bieber selling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I cut you off there. Oh, my God. Yes. The baby bell cow. That's alarming. That's who human but look at her donk oh. that they're cutting off <laughs> wait why they, why they did they knew what they were doing why there. is the baby bell cow double bbl'd up on a on a wednesday morning why is the bbl cow the bbl cow? james charles wait the baby bell cow is the bbl cow oh my god i didn't even say that on purpose whoa wow she is cheeked yeah. up but they like ma they did the same thing they did with the green giant there like they did it on purpose she has got her eyelashes she's alex Erlin. yeah that's my alex the girl. baby bell cow needs to do a get ready with me <laughs> <laughs> hey guys i'm on set early this morning we're showing off our new cheese dippers the baby what's her name baby i keep getting confused between the bbl, BBL cow the bbl cow needs to head over to dubai <laughs> <laughs> for the tart trip. for the tart trip okay cool i can totally see the the bbl cow on um one of those uh jeep Jeeps in the dunes. Yeah. Going the there. sand with the like scarf. Yeah. <laughs> she's having the time of her life at the yeah. Beyonce, private Beyonce yeah. show at the Atlantis Hotel. And I wow. want nothing but the best for her. Yeah. This is someone who I'm rooting for. Okay. Justin Bieber. Okay. So Justin Bieber sold. Explain this to me like I'm a baby. I'll try. Because I still don't understand this kind of stuff like what happened with Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun. Right. No matter how much I read about it, I don't get it. Okay. Well, that's an interesting piece. But Justin Bieber sold. His music rights for his past um, whatever years of music, what I think it's like 10 or 12, sold it to this group that's owned by BlackRock, which is a big, huge, huge, huge VC firm. Um, they have unlimited money again. Basically, he sold his rights, so he will no longer make royalties, whatever, off of this music. Other people have done it as well. Dr. Dre did it, but Dr. Dre did it at 57 years old. So he's seeing... I can turn my music rights liquid into like spending money, two hundred million dollars a day, or maybe make ten million dollars in royalties every year for X amount of years. When you're fifty seven, it makes more sense. Like I'd rather have this money, have a legacy, and if I come out with new music, I'll own that music. 
You're really smart. Thanks. Yeah. But Bieber is so young, so it makes you wonder. He had to cancel X amount of shows for health reasons, obviously, but also um, like COVID and everything. And so to make up, I think, for like. Oh, you feel like he's in the hole? Lost time. It does raise red flags why a 28 year old would need to liquidize $200 million immediately. Well, here's a question. But how much is Baby, the song Baby, going to be making in royalties in 2033? It's like hard to, unless it, it's sold into a movie Probably or something. Probably 50 million off of Me Alone. Right. But here's a question. Is he, is all of his future music also sold? I do think that he owns his future music. I feel like I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget. But he has, I can't remember. I think he has like 300 plus songs in his catalog. He has Ugh. so many bangers. It is incredible. He Justin Bieber is someone who I have never ever had a crush on, which is amazing and shocking, but have loved his music through and through and through. Yeah, um, yeah, he's an interesting one. What was I gonna say? Oh, I mean, he was apparently on record. He's ha been having lower ticket sales, and they've been actually downgrading his the volume of his his oh. concerts. Oh, that sucks. But that last album was so good. There's just like not a lot of people that are liquidating at his age. It's like an yeah. interesting move. Taylor Swift had a really interesting thing because the Scooter Braun of it all. Yeah, I still. But I don't think that Justin Bieber's going to come out with Justin's him. version of songs, you know? Right. I think that he's good because he's so much ahead of him. He's also a smart like business person and so is Haley. So I feel like they'll, they'll be fine. But okay, I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, I feel like he could make $200 million by farting. Uh, yeah. He could sell it. Would you be that curious jar fart. smelling a Justin Bieber jar fart? I ca yeah, I would be, yeah, just for curiosity and science. I'd be interested in that because you know they're like Kendall Jenner. Like, I want to know what if she has like gross farts or like they smell like flowers. I don't think she farts. She does. I don't think she does. No, she at the at, everyone farts. Kendall Jenner has explosive diarrhea. That's a fact of life. Just like whales are mammals and the, the green bean giant is a gay man. Oh, no, Mr. Clean is a gay man. Kendall Jenner has diarrhea. Yeah. It just is what it is. And yeah, I would like to be in a room with their farts because I think it'll humanize them. You love humanizing people. I love people. humanizing. It's so interesting. Yeah. I, w yeah. I would rather everyone feel like a human than people feel separated by... Like being more famous or having more status or whatever. That's what I feel like. Whereas you like people to stay in their uh, I like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was the whole argument with the influencers versus celebrities. Like celebrities are trying to be more relatable and influencers are Love trying it. to be less relatable. Like look at me, look at this new house I bought, look at this new car I bought. And then uh, celebrities are trying to be like, I'm doing my nails at home now. That's what I was saying about Harry Styles last week. Like, I don't like what he's doing. Just like making himself so not human and not personable and like just like not engaging with anyone or anything. Robotic. Robotic. I don't like that. Operating at a like, machine level. Like, he doesn't level. owe me anything again, but also like, I do a get ready with me. Fart in a jar. You know? You want him to do that? Yes. Oh. That's what I've been saying. Humanize. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I like famous people to be famous. I do love, okay, the last thing I'm going to say, I feel like we need to wrap up pretty soon mm -hmm. and go to bonus for a lot of this stuff where we're going to talk huge, major shit on everybody. I do have some shit to talk in the bonus, which I'm excited about. Um, but I was I was looking at, here's the thing. I was looking at, I think Kylie Brakeman on Twitter was talking about this, but everyone was looking at Kylie Jenner and Doja Cat sitting together and saying like, this is why we need to eat the rich. This is just so opulent. Look at this money being spent on this. Opulent. Wow. Good word. Um, and I'm like, no, this is what money, this is what famous people should be doing. Like, this is what I want to see famous people do. Bizarre, over the top shit. This is what celebrities should be doing. I love Doja Cat's thing so I much. I like Doja's more than Kylie's. I think that is, yeah. Because Kylie, I'm but just I, like, that is a gorgeous dress piece. Which I want to see without the lion. You I think it's, it's art. I, I think it's art. That's what the whole thing is with. I thought it was really funny. What is it saying, Connor? What's it saying? It doesn't have to say anything. I think it does. 
Well, then what is Doja Cat saying? I don't know. That's like 50,000 Swarovski crystals, by the way, that they played. It took her six and a half hours to like get it all on. I was reading about it yesterday. I think that I think that it's a dichotomy here that they are both kind of like balancing each other out. But I think it's very cool. I think it's super, super cool. I'd like to see more of that than than just like I like just classic shit too, but I do like this. I think it's cool. And I think it's a uh, I don't know why I I think it's fun to look like at. Like you don't need to do that and well, do like, that's yeah, a, you do. That's a the actual head of the line is made by an artist who it spent hours and hours and hours and hours. So like I think that that's the mm -hmm. statement. I guess PETA approved this. Well, because yeah, it's, it's not real. Because it's faux. But then a lot of people were like, no, but you're also like, a lot of people are going to see that and be like, wait, I want to mount a lion on my wall. That's not the feeling that I get while looking at that, if that helps. But you would never mount an animal on your wall. I think the people that would mount an animal on their wall would not be influenced by Kylie Jenner. That's not the argument of a lot of people online, but I was just bringing that part up. But um, it does remind me of when I went and watched the World Cup at that bar. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw my Instagram story that day. I was drunk at 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. So I was posting everything that I was looking at. That was really fun. I love being drunk at hours that you're not allowed to be drunk. It's fun. Not an alcoholic. I double checked. And Oh, I saw something that reminded me of you about alcohol consumption. I can talk about that in the bonus. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, And one of my friends got at an estate sale a scarf that had an actual bear head on it and I don't I don't know if it was faux bear but like I don't know if it was faux why it would be in the shape that it was in mm -hmm. like I don't know know who would cut it out but my friend was wearing it like a scarf and he had the bear head right here for the world cup I think it was, he was like USA I have a bear which doesn't make sense now but I was drunk at 7 30 in the morning um but my other friend was like, we were, he was like spitting like in a kind of a, what is it called when you kind of squirt, squirt. He was squirting <laughs> into the bear's mouth. Okay. And everyone on my Instagram story was like, unfollowed. Seriously? How dare you spit beer into a dog's mouth? That was it. That's what this reminds me of. Okay. And it obviously was not a dog at a bar at right. 730 in the morning. Right. We're spraying beer into it. And I would not post it on my Instagram story. That's all it reminds Got me. Got it. Anyways, I guess we'll wrap on that violation of PETA rights via, as, via foe. As a close to this episode, I want to do an in memoriam activity yeah. to panic at the disco. Oh! To honor yeah. their legacy of being a band that has now broken up. I think we should name five panic at the disco songs to celebrate their time together. I'll go first. Nine in the Nine afternoon. In the afternoon. That gets to count as mine, too, because I know that one. You can do the acoustic version that I love on okay. YouTube. Um, cool. Yes. The next one is... Uh, nine in the afternoon acoustic. No, no, no. I mean, nine in the afternoon acoustic. Okay, are you going next? Okay, I have nine in the afternoon. You have nine in the afternoon acoustic. I write sins, not tragedies. It's not fair that you get to go first. Cause, like, okay, you go first. Let's start over. Me with Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. well, I was gonna do that. That one sucks. Okay, <laughs> next. Right. Four. Oh, total. Oh, we're doing five total. We have nine in the afternoon. Nine in the afternoon acoustic. Um, I write sins on tragedies. Me and thanks for the memories. That's Fallout Boy. Dear Maria, count me in. Dear Maria. Oh, I got your picture. I'm coming. No, that's not. Fuck. That's uh, not yeah, Panic at the Disco either. Can we look up Panic at the Disco? No, 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 no. no. I just want. Not I yet. Don't look okay. There. Don't look. Um, oh, 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 oh Jesus sorry, H. sorry, sorry. Oh, no. Jesus did I say Hydrogen. Did I say thanks for the memories? Yeah. I fall, okay. It's That's Fallout Boy, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. Wow, their recent songs are such ass cheeks. It's actually insane. <laughs> I don't. Do I know? No. Is there any other? No, you wouldn't. Know? I mean, yeah, there is, but it'd be. Hey, look, hey, ma, I made it. Oh, look, hey, ma, I made it. Of course, that song look, hey, ma, I made is bad. it. Bad. Okay, and into the unknown, the oh. cover of the Frozen song. Yeah. High hopes, and that's it. Like I don't. That's all I Damn. know. Oh, this is gospel. Damn. That's a good one. They'll be missed. Seriously. Yeah. When when I was gonna read this, I was gonna say, "Panic at the Disco is retiring." Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I but you know, nine in the afternoon 
and I again specify the acoustic version that you can only find on YouTube, is like if I had an, uh, to sing an unaccompanied song that you couldn't find the karaoke version of, it would be that. There's someone that should sell their music rights. They don't for what six bucks. <laughs> That's what I, more than they are gonna make with their royalties. Mm -hmm. Anyways, anyway. okay, I guess we'll wrap. We got a wordle to hit, oh, guys. Oh hell so yeah! We'll see you at the bonus. I have to run to the rest to Barnes of and Rome. Noble really quick. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening. Yeah. See. You. Oh, wait. We have one more in memoriam. Take a good look at us. One of us is about to total our cars in the parking lot. <laughs> Bye. No, Connor, that's scary. This week on Close Friends, once I got a whiff of that that smell, I like can't concentrate. If I could get a body pillow that hugs me back and spray that on it, I would never leave the home. Are you obsessed with me? Oh my God, I think I'm falling in love with you. Oh, smoking is so cool. I wish it wasn't bad for you. I've never smoked a cigarette because I actually can't. You suck the skin off your face. I do. Okay, here's your gift. Yay! Thank you. Oh my <laughs> God, Connor. Sign up on TMGStudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.